a documentary on transportation in St. Lawrence County by Forevermore Studio in association with St. Lawrence County Public Transit and the Volunteer Transportation Center. St. Lawrence County, a land and a people with long traditions of hard work and enjoying the bounty of the playground nature has given them to live in. A predominantly rural county, it is nestled comfortably between the majestic Adirondacks and St. Lawrence River. Known as a tourist destination because of the world-class outdoor recreational opportunities that it provides. Institutions of higher learning dot its landscape. Names like Clarkson and St. Lawrence University are known around the world. And SUNY Canton and Potsdam attract students from across the state. In addition, within a short travel distance are cultural centers like Ottawa, New York City, Toronto, Boston, and Montreal. By far the largest county in New York State, it covers 2,821 square miles, is comprised of 32 towns and one city. However, with a population of less than 110,000 people, there are vast tracts of open space. Once home to many industries, the population is now heavily dependent on agriculture, and that population tends to skew older. The median age is 38, and one in seven residents is over the age of 65. As in many parts of rural America, high levels of unemployment have gripped the population for many years now, and has of course led to lower than average median incomes and higher poverty levels. But has it been a lack of options or until recently, a lack of access to options already there that has caused these challenges. Extremely long drive times and lack of access to a reliable vehicle, and in fact 10% of county residents don't even own one, are in many cases the driving force behind many of these challenges. In 2017, Americans took 10.1 billion trips on public transportation. We operate health centers across the North Country. And look, whether you're a, a, a fortunate wealthy individual or part of the underserved community, we all struggle with the challenges of transportation. My name is Ray Babowitz. I'm the Director of Communications, Government Relations, and Marketing for Community Health Center of the North Country. I mean, we can offer the best health care in the world. Doesn't do you any good if you can't get there. Many patients in our health centers are now getting the preventive care that they need because they have a way to get there to see the doctor before they're sick. That ultimately is saving, I mean, look, obviously that's the right thing to do to begin with, but money talks. You, by opening up access to the care that the patients now have, we are saving the healthcare system literally millions of dollars a year just in the state of New York. I've been using the bus for a little over a year. I use it to go to the store a lot, mostly for that reason in itself. But uh, sometimes I go to doctor appointments, you know, when I need to go to them. I, I get dropped off close enough to where it's feasible for me to do that. Well, it's, it's a blessing, really, to have this. Because first of all, I'm in the four stage of COPD, so I can't walk very much. So to have to walk a, a half a mile or more, it would literally put me on the ground. There's so many reasons why people ride the bus. We have college students, we have the Amish, we have people that have physical and or mental disabilities. They depended on public transit as well as volunteer drivers to get them um, to work, school, medical appointments. Um, there's so many different reasons why they ride. Well, it's really important to me, the transit system, because it comes over to the next door from me. And like in the winter time, we people get on just for a pastime and to go somewhere and get out. And 
it keeps more horses out of town a lot more. And Amish still have a worn way to go to town. They have more needs in town than some people think they do. And this really connects like from Nickelville to Hivelton area. And some, I've been on this bus that it was loaded. And sometimes if there's a wedding date, they make even an extra trip to get that many people. Public transportation provides personal mobility and freedom for people from every walk of life. My name is Judy and I'm from Augensburg. I lost my husband three years ago, so being able to be around people that I know has been phenomenal. They've been supportive. He didn't get a chance to see the bus, but I'm sure he would have used it more often if he was still here. Using public transit makes it easy for me in the wintertime. Summertime I can go and not worry about my motors getting ruined or my tires getting full of snow. I've used transit a couple of times in Augensburg and it just makes it so much easier, especially when I'm low on power. <laughs> but the four dollar round trip, can't beat it. Can't beat it. You can't take your car out for four dollars, <laughs> that's for sure. This is awesome, being able to come down here and get what I need instead of say, okay, can you get me something? And, you know, and for more people to be able to get out and do things and enjoy different, get away from the city for a while. And that's pretty awesome. Students often rely on public transit to provide them with transportation while they attend college. I started using the bus back in August of 2018 till now. Uh, I'm actually gonna start, I'm gonna be using the bus for a few more years until I actually get a vehicle. Um, Cause I don't have my license yet and I'm still working on that and also getting a car and saving up and everything like that too, so. When I'm on the bus, um, I just kick back and relax, just basically like a cool down and I uh, listen to music or I'll have a conversation with some of the bus drivers. I would say that the bus is meant for everyone, not for poor, not for rich, for everybody that needs transportation. If you don't feel like taking your own car and you want to, instead of like taking a taxi or whatever, it's affordable. And all you got to do is tell them where you're going and they never say no, they, they can't take you there. I'm an exchange student um, to Clarkson. My major is electrical engineering. How often do you use the bus? Um, here I use the bus like maybe every two weeks or three weeks. The, there was a boarding ship uh, and we took the bus there. Like all international students and exchange students, we took the bus to go to the, uh, to play bowling. My name is Danny Nevis, I'm from New York City. I'm a criminal justice major. My name is Christopher, I'm from New York. Yeah. Tell me yeah. some of the things you use it for. Just go to Walmart most of the time <laughs> when we're bored and uh, go to town too. Yeah, probably to like to go like, to hospitals. To go to like movies that. and stuff like that, yeah. So you, you, all, you guys all met, met using the public transit? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, no, I, I, well, I, don't honestly, think, I don't think we would. First of all, it's too cold to go <laughs> walking and then this is like a safe haven. Uh, without the bus, honestly, I would just stay on campus the whole time. Yeah. I would just never leave. <laughs> I'm Leo Morinaga and I'm from California, uh, Los Angeles actually. Which um, major? I'm Innovation and Entrepreneurship, which is like a business uh, specified major. So what does public transit mean to you? Um, it takes me everywhere. I mean, coming from, I don't have a car back home in California either. Um, and so I rely on the bus pretty often. I mean, because there's no other way to get around. So it's always like, I don't know, I feel like I could always count on it to like take me from point A to point B and just, um, I don't know, it's always reliable. St. Lawrence Public Transit hires experienced bus drivers, many of which make connections with their riders. I've met quite a few people. I've had college kids, um, senior citizens. Um, I've been driving for professionally for a long time. So I've, I've seen a lot of things and been a lot of places. I've drove them fixed routes runs to um, charter buses like the big Greyhounds and and stuff like that. I've pretty much been 
right on through everything at, at public transportation and private transportation has to offer. When I started the bus over the transit run in Augsburg a little over four years ago, I ran into four older individuals who basically had no transportation for years. They started riding my bus and they enjoyed it so much they'd get on every morning and they'd ride for hours and hours. We'd listen to the radio, country music. They've gotten to know me personally. They know my birthdays. They know my wife's anniversary. They get on and remind me, today's your anniversary, David. What did you get your wife? Today's your kid's birthday. They know I've shown them pictures. My kids live out of state. They come and visit. They love to hear about my kids. The handicapped individuals, especially people with wheelchairs, they love to ride on here. It's $2 one way. I get them out where they want to go, grocery stores. I come back, they're ecstatic. They just love the bus. They love the opportunity to get out and actually do something. Partnering with Public Transit, the Office of the Aging is able to bring senior citizens to local farmers markets, giving them a chance to eat healthier, enjoy the fresh air, and make connections with new people. My name is Christiana DeForge. I'm from Winthrop, New York. I am a program coordinator for the Office for the Aging and I help organize the farmer's market event. The SNAP program, um, formerly referred to as food stamps or EBT is the card that you get it on now. It can definitely help seniors who are on a fixed income and fortunately at the farmer's market here you can get your SNAP benefits doubled. I think $20, up to $20 each time you come, you can get another $20 to use for fruits and vegetables at the farmer's market. So our office receives farmer market coupons from the state and they are distributed to eligible seniors in the area. The farmer's market coupons can be used at the farmer's markets or specific farm stands. An issue with the farmer's market coupons is that people, specifically in Augensburg and some other towns in the county, they don't have farmer's markets in their towns. Unfortunately, again, a lot of those people don't have transportation. So we were thinking we could pair up with public transit to get the people who either have never driven or no longer drive to the farmer's market. So myself um, and my coworker, Cynthia Ayer, and another coworker, Chris Fobert, and then public transit's mobility manager, Frank Doldo, we all got together and kind of planned this out um, specifically for seniors who have the farmer's market coupons that we receive and for those who don't have transportation. We can get them on the bus, you know, the first time you do something, it's kind of scary. So we'll, we had staff on the bus riding to answer any questions or help with any concerns. Try to just get them on and see how comfortable they can be on the bus and hopefully use, use it more. In St. Lawrence County, 15.5% of the population had a disability in 2015. We had four seniors ride the bus and it was nice. They. I believe three of the four had never rode on public transit before and there was a lady who needed her walker. She was able to get on the lift and get on the bus, easy as that, and she was really comfortable with the whole situation. It was nice to hear that she would ride the bus again. So it was really beneficial that the bus was accessible for people who need walkers, wheelchairs, their scooter. Um, I got a lot of calls in the beginning, I really want to go to the farmer's market event, but I need my wheelchair. and. It was nice because they have the lifts on the vans or on the buses to get the wheelchairs on the bus. They can hook up the wheelchair to a seatbelt and they're ready to go. Well, if you know, I've been over here for a while with my sister in Augensburg and then we, we decided to come over with my friend. I've not been here when, when this has been going on, eh? I've never been at eh? so I think it's very nice. It's wonderful. I love it. Well, it, it was my first time, and it's very enjoyable. The people are all wonderful people. The driver's great. It was a great trip over here, eh? You know, I, you know what I would have been doing today? Walking the dog. So this is wonderful. Yeah, we, we met people that are very, very sociable, very nice, very kind. Tatties and, and this, and, and green peppers. And isn't it wonderful? Tonight, I'm going, my dog's going to watch me, eh? He'll get dog food. I'll have the best. The very, very best. But Riley, Riley has to have something too, so I'll get him something later. I'm Judy. I'm from Augensburg currently. Well, the Office for the Aging sponsored this for senior citizens uh, from Augensburg. And I saw it advertised in North Country Now or this week and uh, called them and made arrangements along with other senior citizens to come from Augensburg to come to the farmer's market today. 
Uh, I don't currently drive. I don't have transportation, so I walk or take buses or taxis. So, oh, definitely for this county. And so there are a lot of people uh, like myself, I think, in kind of relatively uh, rural St. Lawrence County who need transportation desperately. Oh yeah, got a lot of vegetables, garlic and um, Swiss chard and squash to make uh, bread, yeah. I thought it was very convenient and very accessible, and I think I'm going to use it more often. We don't have a farmer's market in Ogdensburg, so if we want to go, this is the closest one. I think it's very reasonable, and it's cheaper than the price of gas if you tried to come. And for people like me that don't have a vehicle, this is super convenient. I have, and the bus driver is a mutual friend of a friend. I've met some other seniors that used to be in senior clubs with me. It's, it's really nice. I did. I brought um, fruits. I brought vegetables. I brought some cookies. Didn't need. <laughs> The Volunteer Transportation Center offers the First Mile, Last Mile program, which goes hand in hand with public transit. First Mile, Last Mile is part of our program that is able to get people to work, education, they need to go to, to college. So they are able to take the public transit bus to uh, school or work wherever they need to go. Our drivers will take them from their home to the nearest bus stop. As the program director here at VTC, um, I oversee the office staff. Um, I work with the drivers on a regular basis, making sure that they have everything that they need and that things are going with, well with their trips. And I also work with the clients to make sure that they're getting their needs met the best way that they can. There, there are people from all walks of life that use this service. You know, there is the, the little old lady that doesn't have any family anymore, so she uses the service. There's the person that um, wants to go to college full time but can't because she doesn't have the means. She doesn't have the means to get there. There's the people that aren't able to work because they don't have a means to get there. We also have people that are sick that they may have their own vehicle, but um, they just can't drive themselves. We have a very wide variety of people that we help. The First Mile, Last Mile program serves many age groups. In 2019, 11% under the age of 21, 21% between the ages of 21 and 30, 22% between the ages of 30 and 40, 17% between the ages of 40 and 50, 16% between the ages of 50 and 60, and 13% over the age of 60. Riders using first mile, last mile have a variety of reasons why. In 2019, 4% used it for medical services, 5% to visit someone, 16% for educational purposes, 66% for work, and 7% for other reasons. Um, because it saves walking, basically, and it's, um, it's faster and it actually saves a trip from being in the cold all the time. <laughs> if first mile, last mile and public transit did not exist, I would be in a very big rut. You know, I, I wouldn't have any way of transportation at all. I would have no way of getting to school and having my education that I want or need. It would be very frustrating and difficult to have my friends to rely on or my family to rely on because you know they all have their own lives as well. I probably had to go back to carpooling which wasn't terrible but honestly it wasn't a super reliable way to get around uh, especially during the winter. First mile last mile helped me during the winter and uh, before I was actually on occasion having to walk from DSS to the college which below zero weather isn't super great. Uh, yeah, living in Potsdam, working in Canton, it's a big commute. First mile, last mile has definitely helped me be able to keep my job and do better at it. It'd be pretty hard to get to work. Honestly, I don't know if I'd still have the job. I'm hoping that uh, by taking first mile, last mile, I'll be able to save up enough to get my own car. Until I can get an affordable car, I'm definitely going to be using first mile, last mile. And thankfully, because of how reliable they are, I'll 
actually be able to afford one. It'll go a lot faster, in fact. In 2015, 10.4% of households in St. Lawrence County did not have a vehicle. Uh, we have a contract with volunteer transportation to provide our medical transportation. Um, so this is to uh, get the senior to and from their medical appointments. Um, they also do a grocery shopping trip per month, um, unlimited trips for cancer or dialysis treatments, which is really important, um, as well as nursing home visits, which is a kind of a nice um, added bonus that they do. If your loved one is in a nursing home, um, they'll bring you to see them. First mile and last mile is great because we have a lot of folks who don't live anywhere near um, public transportation, um, so it's not really a viable option for them. You know, if they don't have a car any longer, or if they're not able to drive, it allows them the flexibility to get out of their house more frequently and get to the appointments that they need to, um, as well as get to stores, shopping, um, you know, and whatnot. It increased flexibility uh, for that. We have um, a client um, who lived in a more rural area and he is not of the generation that wants to use a debit card um, and he wants to pay all of his bills in cash every month but he would have a difficulty in doing his grocery shopping because he needed to go to the bank first. Um, and this became something that really was quite challenging um, because how, you know, if he goes through VTC they can bring him grocery shopping but they can't bring him to the bank. Um, so um, first mile, last mile was actually a fantastic solution to allow a volunteer driver to go pick him up or bring him to the bank, or I'm sorry, bring him into public transit. Then he was able to go to the bank, go do his grocery shopping, and still not alter the way he preferred to do things. He didn't want to get into the electronic age of managing his money. Um, and we were worried we were going to have to get him into that and get him adjusted and help him with that. Um, but he was able to maintain his choice and his independence uh, with this program. Um, so a lot of the volunteer drivers um, actually were our medical drivers prior to VTC taking over the contract. So um, many of our clients were able to maintain the same relationships with the drivers once we started contracting with VTC, which was really important. A lot of our clients like that familiarity of having that same driver. Some of the drivers have driven them for 10, 15, or more years. Um, so they, with um, us working with VTC, our drivers are now still the same. Um, and that's been great because it's a, it's a relationship, it's a family. Um, they get to know each other, there's a comfort level. We have certain clients who will only ride with certain drivers and they will schedule their appointments around the schedule of the drivers. You know, when I was first told about First Mile, Last Mile, when uh, we were about to soft launch it last year, I, I said to Frank, I said, this program is going to have more impact on the social determinants of health than anything else we do. And look, social determinants meaning safe housing, food security, all the other things that, you know, are very important to your life. We are fortunate in St. Lawrence County. Compared to some surrounding counties, St. Lawrence County is like Manhattan. At least we have a bus route, thanks to, you know, uh, St. Lawrence County transit system. You can pretty much get to any place you need to go. Great. What if you live in a, a, a rural town, you know, outside of whatever, pick a town, Governor, Messina, any of us. I mean, we know how tough it is. So what if you can't get to the bus stop? You can't access the bus system. So with first mile, last mile, there's no reason for you not to get into the transit system now. Think about this. It's not just about accessing health care. This person now, maybe for the first time in their life, can go to college. Maybe the only thing keeping them from getting a college education was they had no way to get to class. They couldn't get to SUNY Canton or wherever they wanted to go. Maybe for the first time and who knows when, they don't have to go to the corner gas station to buy their dinner. They can actually get to a real grocery store and buy some healthier food. So, you know, they're bettering their education, they're bettering their job prospects, they're, they're, they're obviously earning more money that way. They can get out and buy real food, maybe ultimately buy better housing and overall become a healthier person. So it's impacting people from all facets because they now have no reason not to be able to access the bus route. The Volunteer Transportation Center had approximately 350 volunteer drivers in 2019, many having been born or raised in the areas they serve. Their mission? Provide transportation to health, wellness, and critical needs destinations, utilizing volunteers and mobility management 
for anyone who has barriers to transportation. So where are you from? I am from Waddington and I pretty much lived there my whole entire life. This absolutely is a great environment to work in. Not only do you meet with, you work with the same people every day that love our drivers, but you also have drivers that come in all the time. So we get to interact with all of the drivers. Usually we have maybe five or six that come in every day and it's always a different driver. So you get to hear how things are going and that's really nice to be able to, to speak with them and hear how things are going. And I have a family member that just found out that they have breast cancer and they're having treatment in Burlington. Radiation is every day, so she'll be traveling to Vermont every day. So um, we will help them with transportation for, the, for that. Well, I grew up on Long Island and uh, I moved up here to the North Country to be in college in the early 60s and I wound up teaching at SUNY Potsdam that I retired from almost three years now. I have a wonderful wife, I have a, a son and a daughter and four grandchildren. Well, I retired from teaching um, and uh, it took me two months to realize I was going crazy. I wanted to do something that was important. I wanted to do something that was, uh, that helped. And uh, one of my friends uh, it was a volunteer driver of VTC, and uh, she asked me, did you, uh, do you like to drive? I said, I love to drive. Do you have a good record? I said, I've never had a moving violation. She said, go over to VTC, they'll gobble you up. And yes, but I, I do have some, there was one woman that I've been transporting for almost three years now. And we become, we, we have good talks, let's put it that way. My name is Grant Davis and I am the volunteer driver support technician. And also anything that goes wrong in the office, computers, printers, any of that, I'm in charge of that as well. I've been working here for about two and a half years and I originally started as a dispatcher and I now moved into the IT part of it. My favorite part is just being able to help people that need the help. They, they just don't have anywhere else to turn and we're able to give them what they need. I like the, talking to the little old ladies or little old men that are just so appreciative of anything that we can do for them. That, that really makes your day. I do, I've actually uh, have a bunch of people who call me on my direct extension because they have built a relationship with me and I've built a relationship with them and I can recognize their phone number and I talk to them just like we've known each other forever. I do have a family that uses the transportation. I have a grandmother that was not able to drive anymore and when my uh, family was out of town she was not able to get to where she needed to go and I could not take her because I work so she was able to use our company. Uh, my mother moved in with me so I had to retire and take care of her for a while and anyhow long story short they put her in a nursing home and I couldn't sit home. So I, my father used to volunteer drive. He did it for the Office of the Aging and I approached them and they no longer do that. So they referred me to volunteer transportation and here I am. It's been about a year and uh, I really enjoy it. You meet a lot of people, you know, and you, you can help the community. You're helping. I feel I'm helping the community. They have appointments that they can't make unless somebody's able to take them and that's my job. Meeting new people. You meet you, all levels, you know. These doctors make their appointments for them. They can't go unless you, somebody is able to take them. You meet a lot of good people and um, you're just knowing that you're helping them, you know, is a very good reason to do this, I believe, you know. Um, that's my goal, I mean, my, my objective. I'm doing something, I'm being useful, you know. I'm just not sitting to home. You can only clean house so much. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm out in the community and I'm actually doing something to help, you know. There is something different every single day, whether it be our fixed routes or our public transit. Um, you see new people, you know the likes and dislikes of the people that we serve. 
Um, it is, it's something different every day. My name is Rosemary Allen, born and raised between Russell and Edwards all my life. After my husband and I got married, we moved to Rochester, New York for about eight years and moved back because I'm a country girl. Well, I'm a volunteer driver. I take people local. I don't do long trips no more. It's just rewarding and must be because I've been doing it for 33 years. You don't have to ask questions, you just listen. And you learn how the outside world lives that I would never realize. Well, yeah, yes, you yeah, have had a brand new girl from Governor to Potsdam. And uh, we're talking away just like, just like anybody. You know, I just talk a mile a minute and, they, and she, she could out talk me, so that's pretty good. You know, but she, when I got her back to her house, she says, I like you, she says. I hope I can get you again, she says. I'm gonna ask for you. And she lives in Governor and I live in Edwards, or Edwards, Russell area. And we're like 20 miles away, like I am in the can. But I, you know, we go all over. And uh, I said, well, hope so. We hope to see you again all the time, you know. Oh, she says, you're so amazing, she says. And you're so easy to talk to, you know. And I said, you know, I said, she says, I've had a lot of different drivers, but she said, I've never had anybody like you. And I said, you made my day too, you know. How long have you been doing first mile, last mile? Nine years. Um, I'm retired from GM, but I do this to get out of the house, meet people, help people. You get a little extra. It's good. I mean, like everything else, you have your good days, your bad days. You meet a lot of different interesting people. I'm from the scene of, yeah, I take trips to Burlington or Saranac Lake, Augensburg, Canton, Malone, Hot Stand. That's that area general. I don't go to Syracuse anymore. My name is Simal Ratna, Hetty Gamage, and now I am working as a volunteer driver. I live in Canton and uh, I am from Sri Lanka. I, I have been here since 2014. Uh, here I am uh, driving for four years from 2014. In my country I have about 34 years driving. So you do this in, in Sri Lanka? Yes. Some I met uh, Oh, different, different people. Uh, they, all the people are uh, very nice people. I am getting a lot of people from the 25 Darcy Street Cafe House. They are very nice people. I'm very, I'm very thankful that those two things, first mile, not last mile, and um, public transit exist. <laughs> St. Lawrence County Public Transit and first mile, last mile, providing a better quality of life.